Now the Industrial Revolution neared its peak. Coal mining boomed. In the hundred years after the Battle of Trafalgar, production per year was to grow from 10 million tons to 225 million tons. To get it meant a vast increase in manpower. I carry the large bits of coal from the wall face to the pit bottom. The weight is usually a hundred weight. I don't know how many pounds that is, but it's some weight to carry. I've nought to do but sit and open a door with a band to it. I never see daylight now, except on Sundays. I push the calves along the tram road. It tires me at night, in my back and shoulders and all over. I don't like it because it's dark and being in so many hours. I don't play at all. Sometimes I whistle. Collier people suffer much more than others. My good man died nine years since with bad vapor. He was entirely off work 11 years before he died. I hold the riddle and have to shake the slack out of it and then throw the rest into the core. It's very hard work. I've been lamed in the ankle and strained in my back. You must just tell the Queen Victoria that women people here don't mind work, but they object to horsework. She would have the blessing of all the Scottish coal women if she could get them out of the pits. Neither drainage nor ventilation are sufficiently attended to by the health and comfort of the work people in the majority of cases. Where in some, the ventilation is so imperfect that it is positively dangerous. Fire damp remained the gravest danger. Miners became skilled in detecting its presence by the flames of their naked candles. But even so, every week several miners and boys were killed or burnt by fire and explosion. Perhaps the steel mill was the answer, an invention of Carlisle Spedding, one of the great names in coal mining history. It was a steel wheel turned against a piece of flint lighting the workings with a shower of sparks, which were thought to be not hot enough to ignite the fire damp. It was as dangerous as the candle. Even the phosphorescent light of putrefying fish skins, miners were ready to try any extreme. They might as well have worked with no light at all, as indeed they sometimes did. But when explosives were used for blasting coal, and a hand drill was the only tool, a good light was essential. In any case, as the fuse was only a slender hollow stalk filled with powder, a candle was needed to light it. With the blasting of coal came a new hazard, explosive coal dust. Disaster followed disaster. Within two years, 600 men were killed in Tyne and Weir. In 1812, at Felling Colliery, 92 men were killed. Something had to be done. The Sunderland Society was formed for the sole purpose of finding a remedy. It appealed to Sir Humphrey Davy for help. Within a year, he produced a lamp which he and others who believed in it took underground to prove to the miners that it could be used in a fiery pit without igniting the gas. It is, he said, the best thing I ever did. But a magistrate said, I have always been of the opinion that though Davy's lamp was a valuable discovery, it has in practice been much abused, for it has enabled colliers to work where they otherwise ought not. I wish to add, that when it is used, an explosion may be produced by the imprudence of any single individual. The only 
safety is a perfect ventilation. Fire baskets were the first artificial means of ventilation. They were lowered down a shaft. The fire caused the air to rise in that shaft and to circulate in the workings. These fire baskets later became huge furnaces placed near to the base of the upcast shaft and were in use until the coming of mechanical fans. As the mines became bigger, the working faces only were supplied with a flow of air. But this left large parts of the mine unventilated and they filled up with dangerous pockets of gas. Then, by the use of ventilation doors and brick stoppings, the air was made to circulate throughout the whole mine. But in doing so, it had to travel so far that it became highly charged with gas and would often explode when it reached the furnace. A remedy for this danger was put forward by an anonymous writer who called himself a rational friend to schemes of improvement. He suggested dividing the mine into a greater number of independent systems of ventilation, so disposed that each wagon road should form part of an air course. The great John Buddle put this system into practice and brought about a revolution in the ventilation of coal mines. <laughs>